Hi class, welcome to week five of History 1301. Uh, this week, make sure to check the announcements um, to see everything that you guys have due. You're more than halfway through with the course. You guys have your discussions this week. You also have your um, quiz that you'll have to do and your essay will be due soon. Please make sure that as you guys are writing your essay you should have your topic already picked out and you guys should be starting your research and writing that. Use your resources that you have available. The CTC Writing Lab is a great resource for you guys to use. You guys will be able to uh, send in your completed essay and within 72 hours you get feedback uh, so you guys can edit it before you submit. That is a great resource. Please, please use it. Um, and we'll get started with our video for the week. So this week I am in uh, the Anacostia neighborhood of Washington, D.C. and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about this man behind me here. You can see a mural here. This is Frederick Douglass. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you guys to the Frederick Douglass home here in Anacostia. So as we are walking, take these off. Um, I am walking down W Street. This is the street that uh, Frederick Douglass walked down and we'll go to the outside of his house so you guys can kind of see it up the hill and we'll talk a little bit about him. Um, so what I'm going to show you guys is the home of Frederick Douglass where he lived from the 1870s, I think 1877, up until his death in 1895. Uh, Franklin Doug or Frederick Douglass, as you guys um, will read this week, he was born into slavery. He was separated from his mother as an infant and then lived with his grandmother until about age seven. His uh, mother um, died when he was was younger and his, his grandparents died when he was about seven as well. Uh, they were all slaves and after his grandmother died he got sent to Baltimore, Maryland to live um, for the rest of his his childhood. Sorry there's a lot of traffic and everything, You'll have to do a lot of noise. Let me get up here to our spot. So when Frederick Douglass was a child his mistress in Baltimore uh, Took it upon herself to um, to educate Frederick. She taught him the alphabet, um, started to teach him how to read, and then her husband believed that. Uh, sorry, I'm in a neighborhood, so there's a lot of people wondering what I'm doing. Um, her husband believed that uh, teaching slaves to read was was a bad idea and that that would only lead to them pushing and fighting for their freedom. So following the um, the lead of her husband chose to stop doing that um, and even though she stopped teaching him uh, how to read, how to write, and his education, that did not stop Frederick Douglass from taking his education on himself and learning how to read and how to write and becoming an educated person. Uh, when he was a child, when he would go out into the streets on the sidewalk, he would take bread and he would trade it with children that lived in the neighborhood. Um, he would say, here's some bread, and then in return they would teach him how to read. They would give him reading lessons. Uh, as a young adult, uh, a teenager, he tried to escape a few times. Uh, he was unsuccessful, but in 1837, he met a free black woman named Anna Murray, fell in love with her, and the next year in 1838, he was able to successfully escape. Uh, he went to Philadelphia, eventually made his way to New York where he called for Anna to join him and they were married. Uh, Frederick Douglass, as you guys will read, was the leader of the ab abolitionist movement. He was a very, very important person, um, and he was also a big part of the suffragette movement, movement uh, fighting for women's rights to vote. Um, in 1848, he was the only African American to attend the Seneca Falls Convention in New York, and he said that if uh, 
that he could not accept the right to vote as a black man if women also could not claim that right. He saw the oppression of women just as fight worthy as the uh, struggle to end slavery. So I can't get in right now. And I'll lift this up so you guys can see. Um, up those steps there is Frederick Douglass's house later on. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get in and show you guys a little bit more of the house. It's a large house that he built onto throughout his life. I'll hold it up and see if you guys can can see it there. But unfortunately I cannot jump the gate, but you can see his house there and then the sidewalk in front of his house and we'll kind of circle around. Um, so on July 5th, 1852, Frederick Douglass gave one of his most famous speeches. It was called, What to the Slave is the Fourth of July? Um, and it is often deemed as one of the greatest speeches um, on anti-slavery ever given. And I've got a little uh, excerpt that I want to read to you guys as well that's very powerful. Um, it says, What to the American slave is your Fourth of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him, more than all other days in the year, the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham, your boasted liberty an unholy license, your national greatness swelling vanity. Your sounds of rejoicing are empty and, you're heart and heartless, your denunciations of tyrants brass-fronted impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery, your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings, with all your religious parade and solemnity are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, and hypocrisy, a thin veil to cover crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. So, as I noted before, uh, he was a big proponent of education, both his own education and uh, the education of all African Americans. And he said that education was crucial for African Americans to improve their lives. He was an early uh, advocate for school desegregation and pushed for that. During Reconstruction, so after the Civil War, he became an ambassador to Haiti and he was the first first black man to hold high office in the United States. In 1888, he became the first African American to receive a vote for president uh, of the United States during the Republican National Convention. I believe he got two votes uh, in his life um, at, a, at the Republican National Convention to be president. So we'll talk a little bit about his personal life and you can see the sides of his estate here. There's the Frederick Douglass and the houses is up there on the hill behind the gates. And there's a little uh, quote here and we'll show some pictures of him. So there's Frederick Douglass there, of course. Um, so two years after his first wife, Anna died. And this is Anna's picture here. Two years after, uh, after she died, he met and married a woman named Helen, who is sitting right here, and then that's Helen's sister. Um, so uh, Helen was Helen Pitts. He married her in 1844. She was a white abolitionist and suffragist, um, and also 20 years younger than Frederick Douglass. Her parents were also abolitionists and fought to end slavery, but upon her marriage to uh, Frederick Douglass, they disowned her, which really shows how um, unaccepted and taboo interracial marriage was back in the, in the day, in the 1800s, even for uh, abolitionists. Um, the black community also felt his decision to marry a white woman was really controversial as he uh, represented them and was a pillar, very strong figure in their community. They questioned why their most prominent spokesperson chose to marry 
a white woman instead of um, a black woman and Douglas responded to this controversy by saying that his first wife was someone who was the color of his uh, mother who was black and his second wife was someone who was the color of his father. And they were together until his death and uh, Helen created the Frederick Douglass uh, Foundation in his honor afterwards. And there's, we'll show pictures of them again. And then um, there's some photos of Frederick Douglass working in his home on Cedar Hill, which is the one that, that I showed you again right up there. I'm sorry that I couldn't get inside today, but I wanted to give you guys um, a little brief discussion on Frederick Douglass since you'll be reading about him this week. Um, and again, please uh, get to work on your essays. Please start those and use your resources. Uh, as always, please email me or message me if you have any questions or concerns. I am here to help and I uh, hope you guys all have a great week. Bye.